Our sun moves in to Virgo. We've got our full moon partial lunar eclipse in Pisces. And this is our last week of summer season. That's right. Our autumn equinox is Sunday, August 22nd. My friend, we've got some things to talk about today. So welcome to the Sidereal Astrology Forecast for the week of September 16th through the 2nd. Hey, 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 my friend. If we have not met, Danny C. Mooney's here, intuitive astrologer and spiritual counselor, helping you understand your inner guidance system so that you can move forward in life and business as you fulfill your soul's mission. My friend, I'm excited to be here with you today for another forecast uh, all about what is going on in our sky. Plus, I've got a super special announcement at the very end. So be sure to stay tuned for that because it is something that we all need right now. All right. So if you are new here, this is, we have this on two different places. So if you're somebody that wants to see the charts and, you know, walk through those with me, then definitely make sure that you are on the YouTube channel, keeping it real with Sidereal. If you are listening to this or you would like to just listen to this podcast, maybe take me on the go with you on your drive, on your walk or maybe just have me right next to you as you do your work. <laughs> I've heard uh, doing the laundry, folding the laundry, cleaning the house. I I'm go with you everywhere, my friend. That is on our podcast, The Cosmic Mystic Podcast. You can find more uh, episodes over there about the different seasons. There's interviews over there with amazing people. So definitely, even if you're here on the YouTube channel, go check out the Cosmic Mystic Podcast because if you like this, you'll probably like that as well. All right, let me share my screen. Let's dive in. So as I said, we kick off this week with our sun in Virgo. So our sun has moved out of the fiery, energetic, dramatic Leo and has moved into Virgo. So you can see right here as we kick off a Monday, we're at 29 degrees 57. If I advance that just by an hour, bam, well, actually two hours, <laughs> Bam, you'll see that it moved in to Virgo. So by 10 a.m. on Monday, September 16th, you will see our sun shift into Virgo. Now, I always love to do our State of the Union to tell you where everybody's at right now. So let's go ahead and drop that in. We've got the sun in Virgo. We've got Mercury here in Leo. We've got Mars over here in Gemini. Jupiter still hanging out here in Taurus. We've got Uranus uh, in retrograde in Taurus. Chiron in retrograde over here in Pisces. We've got Neptune in Pisces in retrograde. Saturn in retrograde in Aquarius. Our moon is currently in Aquarius. And we've got Pluto over here in Capricorn, who is also retrograde. And then we wrap it up here with Venus, who is in Virgo and he'll, who will be moving out of Virgo um, into Libra shortly. So let's talk about our sun. And I want to kick off with talking about Virgo. Now, I will be doing a whole podcast episode. They usually go about 50 minutes. So I've got lots to share with you around the Virgo energy as well as how to use that energy. So there's the zodiac sign and then there's the zodiac season, right? There's a zodiac sign and its energies. And then it's how we can use it in our day-to-day, -day, in our life, and in our business. And so in that podcast episode, I go through everything that you're going to need to know about Virgo energy, the Virgo zodiac sign, and then how to use the season in your life and business for deeper self-awareness, self-improvement, where your focus may be, which is always confirmation of uh, what's going on uh, with you. And then uh, we'll also talk about how you can use this energy for business. All right. So first off, let's talk about Virgo energy because Virgo is the earth element. It's an earth 
sign. And so we've moved from Leo, which is the fiery energy. It's the middle child of the fire. And now we move into Virgo, which is also the middle child. Uh, it is the middle sign in the zodiac system of the earth signs. So we have Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn are our earth elements. And so the baby, it really is Taurus. The middle child is Virgo. And then more of like the adult, the elder is the Capricorn energy. And just by saying that alone, you can already start to feel what this energy is with Virgo. So Virgo is a little bit different out of the other earth elements elements because Virgo is ruled by Mercury. And so because it is ruled by Mercury, which is Mercury also rules Gemini, which is an air sign, there is a little bit more of a mental energy that we see here with Virgo, which makes Virgo super practical and can also bring in anxiousness and uh, a little bit of restlessness. So it is also the modality that is flexible. So it is a mutable modality, which means it needs change. It needs versatility. Um, if not, it feels restless. So during the season, you may start to feel a little bit restless, like things need to change. I need something different. I need some more flexibility. And one of the beautiful things is that Mercury, right, who rules Virgo, is a changeable energy. It's a fast-paced energy. If you're ever wanting to do, like, to, to, to get things to speed up, like those, you know, deliveries, uh, you know, you can work with the planet Mercury and do some planetary magic to bring in that faster, quicker energy. And so, I really love that there is this, this excitedness of Virgo, but there's also a very practical groundedness because it is an earth element. So we kind of bring that energy and ground it in. So we've had this really beautiful fiery season with Leo. And now with Virgo, we're grounding that energy in. We're grounding those ideas in that creation, the things that we started to create, we're now getting them into a structure, into a process, into a system. And I can tell you, my friend, I'm like feeling this like, like ridiculously right now, because it's exactly what is happening in my world right now. As I had this really beautiful um, idea in our air element during Gemini season, and then it kind of moved a little bit, got a little bit more emotionally connected to it in cancer and really decided and got into creation mode about what it might look like in Leo. And here I am in Virgo now executing that idea, now executing what that might look like. And this is the really beautiful way that you can use each of the zodiac signs to kind of move through the things that you are doing in your life. So let me tell you really quick, just a couple of things about Virgo season as we start to enter this Virgo season. It is extremely practical. Um, it is about the systems and structures in our life, the day-to-day -day routines, the things that we do. There's a lot of perfectionism here. And so wanting to perfect things. And so this constant idea of this could be better, this could be better, this could be better. And so you know, definitely Virgo can get stuck there, right? And wanting to change it, wanting to make it better and constantly trying to improve it that it's it, it, it doesn't allow for things to kind of settle. And so I want you to kind of know that as we move into this season. Uh, the other really two big things with Virgo is a health focus. So you might even start to see there's a little bit more of a health focus that you have. And we can use these as we go into our day-to-day -day routines. And then the idea of how are we being of service to others? Now, I know many of you that listen to this are in service to others. You have a soul-based uh, uh, heart centered business or, um, you know, something that you are trying to get off the ground in many ways, or it's off the ground and maybe it's just not quite as functioning as, as you would like. And so there's this idea of being of service to others and how you're being of service to others, not only through that business or through that channel, but also as a whole, how are you uh, serving others, which is right. Like we looked at the very much me, me in Leo. And now it's like, well, how do I now 
be of service to others. And so I, I love the energy around Virgo because it's like we get into action in a different way than Leo. We get more into like setting the things up and getting the things going. All right. So let's look at a couple of different aspects as we can see here. Some of these are falling off this week and you can hear more about those uh, in last week's Sidereal Astrology Forecast or our September overview, which goes over everything that you need to know about us, the energy of September. So I want to talk about this one right here, which is the opposition to Neptune. Now, we just had that opposition to Saturn fall off, and I know that that has been a challenge for many of you because you have told me. <laughs> I've had so many people share with me how challenging it has been. It's like, oh, I'm so frustrated. There's all these things, and I just can't seem to shake it. That is definitely what has been going on with that Saturn. Now, Saturn has kind of moved out and kind of moved away, and so that that dark cloud is, is subsiding, but we do have this new one coming in here with Neptune. So let me tell you a little bit about the sun in opposition to Neptune. Neptune is where things can get a little cloudy. Things can get a little hazy. We can't quite see things clearly, which allows us to go into a really beautiful dream state right? We get to connect to, if we think about it, the upper chakras, we get to connect to the divine, to source, to God, like we get to connect into that channel. And out of like the 3D day-to-day -day mundane tasks. So with this opposition though, it can make you more susceptible to confusion, to deception. So, <coughs> excuse me, I would say this could lead to some insecurities and some discouragement. You may start to feel like nothing's working. Nothing is, is like I've been trying and nothing is happening. And it's kind of a little bit con, kind of continuing right from that Saturn energy. So this is really a time to make sure that you're taking care of you, that you're being mindful of what is pulling you away from your dreams, away from what you're wanting to do, and mindful of the addictions that pull you away from reality. Because Neptune can definitely take you into, as I said, those upper chakras, but also pull you so much away that you get distracted and you start avoiding the reality. And so Saturn did a really good job at kind of bring us to the to that reality. And now this is really, you know, we're already kind of weakened here and now we're, we're it's kind of amplified even more. So we're, our defenses can be a, a bit more weakened. Um, I would say try to avoid any conflicts if possible because a lot of the time it's more ego driven than anything. Um, you know, clear is absolutely kind. Uh, it's one of the things that I learned from Brene Brown's book, Lead, uh, Dare to Lead. It's one of my favorite books in leadership. And the idea of being clear about what you mean, about what you're saying is even more so relevant for this particular transit is because there is this haziness and this confusion. We don't want our words to be misconstrued. And although that is not 100% our, our problem, I'll use that word, our problem, because it depends on how the other person is viewing it, correct, right? It depends on what the other person, how the other person per perceives it in their filters, right? And how they're, they're putting it through. But when you come from a place of being absolutely clear, it's the best place you could possibly be. All right, let's take a look at this sun trine Pluto, because this one comes in today. And Pluto always brings an intenseness or a depth to our experience. So anything that you are interested in at the moment, you're going to find yourself wanting to dive deep into it. Um, this particular transit has a great power and influence with it, which means you have that greater power and you have that greater influence over others. 
I would say if there is any struggle here at all, clear your clutter. Our environment is so important, whether we think so or not. That clutter that you have on the shelf, that clutter that you have on your table, that clutter that you have on your chair, even though you don't think that it is bothering you, it is 100% in your energy field. Clutter also holds stagnant energy. So whenever I start to feel a little bit stagnant or things just start to feel a little funky, I will clear my space. I will clear my floors. That's another big one, clearing your floors. Like um, energy can get like stored there. So clear your space, like get that, you know, get that broom out, get that mop out and just clear the floors or vacuum. If you, if you've got carpet, if you've got clutter on a shelf or on a table of some sort, clear that out. Even if you just do a little bit at a time, I don't want you to focus all of your energy on like, now I got to declutter everything. No, 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 no. One thing at a time. I'm so grateful that I am in an accountability group that we meet every Friday morning. And we set three goals for the week. And there's one goal around like our personal health and well-being. There's one goal around our home and one goal around our business. And every week I set a goal of clearing something out. Like this week for me, it's clearing out the bathroom cupboards because they're not that there's a lot of stuff in there. It's just, it just, it's not organized and it's bothering me. And so even though I'm not thinking about it like on a day-to-day basis. It's still in my energy. It is still in my thoughts in the back of my mind. And so I want to clear that out. So that is what we have uh, going on this week with our sun. Let's move into our moon because as I said, we have a full moon uh, partial lunar eclipse happening. And so we do kick off this week in uh Aquarius. And so this is a really interesting full moon. So let me just tell you, and let me just show you for a second. If I advance this by a day, so this is Monday and we're in Aquarius, our sun has moved into Virgo. Now a full moon is the opposition of uh, the sun and the moon. And so the sun being in Virgo, our moon in order for it to be a full opposition would have to be in Pisces. But you can see here as I advance it, we're still in Aquarius. So what's really cool is that because we're at one degree Virgo, we just moved into Virgo in sidereal astrology. You'll see that if I advance this to the end of the day, our sun is still in Virgo here. And our moon moves into Pisces. So although Monday and most of Thursday until about 9, actually it's about 7.30-ish, we are going to see our moon in Aquarius. So our our moon did move into Aquarius Sunday evening, and it is here Monday and then most of Tuesday until we get to that uh, very end of the day where it moves into Pisces with our full moon partial lunar eclipse. So Let's talk about Aquarius really quick, and then we'll talk about our full moon in Pisces. So Aquarius energy is an air energy. It's very much in the mental realm. So lots of thoughts, lots of thinking. Um, You might have lots of ideas. This is a good time to just like brain dump, brain dump all the things. This is a good time to research, like to get yourselves in like research mode and like, what do I need to look up? Really good time to do that. It's also a good time uh, to connect in with community. So, you know, whether that's through Facebook groups, like, you know, the social media groups that you might be in or the communities online that you might be in, good time to connect in that way, sharing your thoughts, sharing your ideas, Uh, your unique perspective on something is also really good during Aquarius or whether those communities are in person and connecting and collaborating. It's also a really good time to do that. And then when we move into our, let's look at our full moon here. We've got a connection up here to Neptune and with our sun in opposition to that Neptune, as we just talked about. We've got this sextile over here to Pluto. We've got a square over here to Jupiter. And we've got the sextile over here with 
Uranus. So this full moon in Virgo on September 17th is emphasizing the service to others and spiritual connection. So we've got these emotional revelations, this intuitive guidance from the moon and Pluto, as well as the moon conjunct Neptune, which is really bringing in this being able to connect in with the divine. So I would say this is a really powerful time for personal transformation, creative problem solving, uh, charitable actions, while also remain remaining mindful of any excess and keeping those really good, healthy boundaries from love. I, I feel like this really, this is a really, there's a really beautiful opportunity for us here with these insights that we can receive. Now, Pisces is the last of the zodiac signs. And so a lot of the times when we see full moons in Pisces or even new moons in Pisces, there's this, this ending energy that wants to happen here. So I would say with this one, in allow yourself, and, and, and let me be clear here, allow yourself to sit still and receive. Now, for my fire friends, <laughs> those of you that have predominant fire in your chart or even um, your mercury in a fire element or your sun in a fire element, that might be very difficult for you. So what I would say is do that activity. Go for that run. Go for that walk. Do that yoga class. I worked with a girl uh, this past week who is a very much a fire element and, uh, you know, she struggles with like journaling and, um, you know, meditation. And so her, her job, what I gave her as a job, as an assignment was to be intentional in her yoga practice in her yoga class. When she goes, be intentional about what she wants to leave on the mat, what she's ready to release in that and, you know, go for a run, go for a walk, be in a physical, um, activity. So it, the point here is to allow yourself to be in a place to receive. And whether that is through meditation, whether that's through breath work, whether that is through journaling, whether that's through exercising or some type of physical activity, whatever that might be for you, allowing yourself to be that open channel to receive information, to receive insights of what it is that is blocking me, what it is that is stopping me, what it is that I'm ready to, to let go of, where that stagnant energy is, whatever that might be, my friend. All right. That is our full moon in Pisces on September 17th at 9.33 p.m. All right, let's keep going on with our moon. So our moon does move in to, it, well, actually it will be in uh, Pisces for those couple of days here. So let me bring that back up for you. And we can see it'll be in, oops, it's on the hour now. It'll be in Pisces uh, all the way through Wednesday and then partially on uh, Thursday. So it's late Thursday evening. We'll see the moon, the moon move out of Pisces and it will move into Aries here. So we've got another almost full day here of Pisces. So when the moon is in uh, Pisces, as I mentioned, we're, we're going to be in that full moon energy, but Pisces is a water sign and it is the sign that is more of that intuitive dream work type energy. And so during this time, there's a lot of creative energy that can come through a lot of intuition. So as I said, Tuesday through Thursday, these evenings, from Tuesday evening to Thursday evening, allow yourself to be open to receive in receiving mode, take some time to do some self-care because water moons are always great for self-care. So taking extra time to sit and journal or sit and meditate or do a somatic breath work practice, whatever it is, to really ground yourself and allow yourself to be an open channel to clear out what might be stuck or stagnant so that you can receive that information. Because I know a lot of people will tell me like, Denny, I can't, I don't, I can't receive anything. I'm not receiving anything. And partially it's because you're full. You're ener energetically, you are full. You are at capacity and you need to release and let go and open up space so that you can receive. And that's what these practices do. Okay. Thursday evening, all the way through Saturday, we'll see our moon move through the zodiac sign of Aries. And so Aries is a fire sign. And so with our fire signs, 
things are going to be um, a little bit more intense. Things are going to be more active. We'll see more active energy with Aries, especially Aries, because it's it's kind of like the go. <laughs> it doesn't look back. It just moves full speed ahead. It's just, let's just go. Let's just do this. Um, let's get going. So this is a really good time to get into action, to start something new, um, to really like move forward with things. It's also the, um, the energy of like, like, it, 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 um, no delayed gra instant gratification. I was like, it's not delayed gratification. It's instant gratification. So there's a lot of like, I want this now. I want this quick. I want this here. And so there's this hurriedness energy of it, or like, I don't have the patience type energy here, here. And so your emotional energy, that's your emotional energy, my friend. And so that could be coming through as well. And that might not be so great sometimes because you're wanting your thing now. And it's, if it's not happening as fast as you want, um, there was a, a client I worked with this week that the message from the guardians were cultivate patience. And she's in this mode where she's so used to being in that hurried, in that achieving energy that, you know, she's being asked to slow down. She's being asked to cultivate that that awareness of being patient. And so I'm going to invite you to do that as well over this uh, Thursday here through Saturday. And then um, Saturday evening in to Sunday, all day Sunday, and we'll even move into this energy on Monday is Taurus. So Taurus is an earth sign. So we'll have our Virgo energy and we'll have our um, Taurus energy, both in the earth element here. So things are going to slow down here come Saturday evening into Sunday. So Sunday's such a great day to kind of stop and smell the roses, to take your time with things, uh, to get more into things, uh, just, just to be, uh, just to more be, not to do because the doing has happened through that Thursday evening, all day Friday and most of Saturday. And so it's Sunday is really just to be. Um, this is a really good time to work on through this period is to work on things, get into things, organize things. Um, even money, working with money is really good during this time as well. All right, my friend, that is our moon. So let's talk about a couple of transits that are happening with, uh, Mars, Mercury, and Venus are, uh, beautiful, more personal planets. Uh, we've got Mars trying Saturn. Let me bring this one up for you here. Uh, coming in later this week. So we'll see this happen uh, later on in the week. So on Sunday, no Friday, this comes in on the 20th here, you'll see this come in. So let me tell you a little bit about what that looks like, because Mars and Saturn in this particular uh, aspect are really beautiful together, because we've got that patience that I was mentioning. So this will kind of cultivate some of that, allowing us to tune in and connect with that energy. Um, good time to like follow through on things, a lot of strength, ambition, determination here, and really like persevering and pushing through. Um, and we'll see this aspect all the way through uh, the first week and a half of October. So we'll have this really nice strength and ambition and patience um, over this period, which is great because if you are changing up those routines, which I'm going to recommend you do as we move into the fall season and as we move into Virgo season, it's a great time to shift our routines and shift the things that we're doing. And so this energy will really help us kind of like really have the energy to go through and do that and follow through with that too. And then we've got Mercury. So let's take a look at Mercury. Mercury is over here. We've got a couple of transits with Mercury uh, coming in this week. Uh, this one in particular is going to be through the 17th through the 23rd. So this week into next week. And this is that square over here to Jupiter. And so with the square, we have a little bit more of an optimistic and broad outlook on things. So things are, are starting to look a little bit better. Things are looking a little bit more open and like possibility energy here coming in on the 17th. And then we've got um, a really good ability to kind of narrow things in. So I love this because it's like we can take, sometimes we get so caught up in the details, my friend, I'm getting so caught up in the little things that we forget the bigger picture. And so we have to like zoom out, right. And have that bigger picture, whether that's in our life, in our work and the things that we're doing, we, we, we need to sometimes come back to that bigger outlook, that bigger energy. 
and then be able to zoom in to the details when it's time to get into there. I think so, sometimes we just spend too much time in the details. So um, I would say this can also be a time of being a little bit over optimistic, maybe exaggerating, overestimating something. So just be mindful of how you are expressing yourself. You might be promising too much that you actually won't be able to follow through in at the end. And then the last one here with Mercury is that trying uh, over to Uranus that we're going to see come in here at the end of the week on Saturday. We'll see this trine over here to Uranus. So this Uranus is always about shifting the energy, changing the energy, opening us up to new ideas and new possibilities. So this is a really stimulating energy. It's it's more electrifying. Um, our psychic abilities, our intuition is really enhanced here with Uranus. So looking at things from a new perspective, getting a new insight on something. So if you've had something that's kind of been nagging and you can't quite figure out how to do it or, or what it might be, this right here, this energy here, which comes in on Saturday, all the way through next week is going to be really, really good for that. So look out for that. And then finally, let's talk about Venus. We've got this square over here that I want to bring to your attention because Venus and Pluto uh, can have this really intense energy because we know whenever we're talking about Pluto, it is always deep and it is always intense. There's a lot of power and control uh, with, with Pluto. And so when we look at it with Venus, there's that's more in the love and money realm. So we in our relationships, right? So there could be some simmering tensions that kind of rise to the surface. So things like jealousy, possessiveness, uh, manipulation can also come through any insecurities that you may have, or your partner may have, or, you know, your friendships that could also be coming. There's like some ultimatums that could be coming through threats, like, you know, you've got to do this or this, right? This can also be a really beautiful time to transform uh, the relationship as well. So bringing those things, you know, bringing those things to the surface and what my love likes to say, like, let's just put shit on the table. <laughs> let's put it on the table and let's look at it because if we don't know what's, we don't, if we don't know what's there, if we don't know what's on the table, how can we deal with it? How can we work through it? How can we come through some type of solution, right? Where we, we often don't do that. And so this is that opportunity to put shit on the table, so to speak, so that uh, you can move through something. All right, my friend, uh, this has been our sidereal astrology forecast for the week of September 16th through the 22nd. Now, I do have a special announcement that I'm so excited to share with you. I have something super special to share with you. As I mentioned earlier, I had had this idea back in Gemini season, and it was as I was going through my breathwork certification. And so if you have been feeling stressed, and overwhelmed or just out of alignment because there is so much going on around you, then you're going to love this. So imagine, imagine this, just 20 minutes a day, tuning in, breathing deeply and feeling completely grounded. I'm talking about like that deep soul level peace that we all crave, but we don't always have the time to do it right? Because our, our, our lives are so busy. There's so many things pulling us in so many different directions. Enter, breathe with Danny. My 22-day somatic breathwork challenge. And it's super simple, super simple. Each day, you'll get a 15 to 20-minute easy somatic breathwork practice that'll shift your energy, help you find clarity, and help you come back to self all for just $22. So you'll get a daily email, which will be a link to our private pod, private podcast called Breathe with Danny that you can listen to on your own schedule. So there's no apps, there's no social media distractions, pure peace delivered right to you. How does that sound? Yes, I know. Honestly, who couldn't, li li who couldn't, use a little bit more peace in their life right now. Cause I'm telling you, we've got a lot going on in our external world. We've got a lot going up in our stars. And so if you're like me, 
there's probably been a been so much chaos that it could last a lifetime. I'm sure. So let's breathe together. If you're ready to reset your energy, if you're ready to feel more grounded and join other healers, coaches, spiritual leaders, then there's a link down below, or you can go to the peaceteacher.com forward slash breathe to sign up. It's just $22. Trust me. <laughs> you are going to love how you feel even just after a few days. So my friend, enjoy your week and let's go ahead and breathe together right now. So go ahead and take a nice deep breath in and let it go. And let's do that again. And let this one go too. One more time. And on that exhale, find peace. Much love, my friend.